Hey everyone and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I am ringing in and celebrating my six month lock anniversary. I have been on this journey, on this particular lock journey for six months as of yesterday, November 15th. Uh, six months ago, I decided that I was ready to sit down and install, I don't even know how many, I've never done a count, but hundreds of braid locks. Uh, and yeah, there was no turning back. I just sat down and started not even sectioning my hair, but uh, finger parting my hair and uh, started braiding. And here we are six months later. Uh, so I thought I would give a little bit of an update. I don't know that there's that much that changes from month to month, but I have seen some changes from month five into month six, and especially from month four to month six. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes today and uh, talk through those in addition to just getting into the fact that it has been six months. And for all those people that say, oh, the time just flies by, I'm not one of those people. Uh, I'm not in a rush for my hair to grow or for my hair to mature, but the whole like, oh man, I look back and I don't know how the time flew, but I'm, I'm just like, no, I feel every day. And I guess it's kind of like when you have uh, kids, when people say like the days are long, but the, the years, go by quickly and I think it's kind of the same way with my lock journey uh, day by day it feels like it's going not slow but at the pace I guess that it's supposed to go but then yeah I guess you know six months in you look back and you're like man it's already been six months since I sat down and spent days putting all of these braids in my hair so some of the changes that I have noticed from month five to month six uh, is the main one is just the amount of frizz and fullness of my hair these days. Um, I think that it has been progressively swelling more and more every week and every month, but I just feel like month six, the amount of frizz and fullness that I'm experiencing is more than ever before. Uh, and I love it. I, I love the frizz. I embrace the frizz. I know that some people frizz can be frustrating and, and um, not what they're looking for. I don't know if it's because I've been on several lock journeys before, so I just understand that there's no way to get from point A to point B without going through all the steps in between, unless you do instant locks or lock, not even instant locks, because even with instant locks, they still have to mature and swell and do whatnot. Um, but if you do the instant lock in the sense of like lock extensions where you're already wrapping or crocheting locks onto your hair, then I mean, as your hair grows out, that hair will have to lock and mature, but the whole length of your lock is not having to go through the maturation process. So that's a little different. But yeah, so I just finished my retie last night. I'm a, a two-dayer where I, I split it up into two days. Doesn't take long. I just watch some shows while I'm doing it. And uh, yeah, those who have watched my previous videos know that I don't have any type of grid pattern. There's no you know, definition to my parts or anything like that. They're different sizes and all of that um, because that that doesn't matter to me. Uh, the only thing I wanted to make sure is that I had a, a middle part and then a part on each side. But besides that, there's no thought given to parting size or anything like that. Uh, I have locks that are all different sizes from, they're all micro, small locks, but I have some that are very tiny, and then I have some that are a little thicker, but yeah, as you see, along the length of the lock, I'm getting lots of frizz, and uh, I'm loving it for the look of the fullness, and just because I know it's part of the process, and so I just know that that means that the lock is doing what it's supposed to do. Um, there are some places where you can still see the braid pattern very well defined in there and then there's other places where you know the braid pattern is starting to disappear because of the frizz so that's another reason that I'm loving the frizz is because I know in order for the braid pattern to disappear they've got to get frizzy they've got to swell up so that they can do what they need to do and um, 
yeah, it's 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 nice to see. Sorry, y'all. It's I washed my hair like three or four days ago, but um, winter time my scalp is extra dry, so I need to wash and oil my scalp again. But yeah, I, I love seeing how the progress of just how much um, growth I've had in terms of uh, seeing the length of how much I've interlocked since I've started. Now, granted, you don't see much length in terms of like, you know, before my hair was here when I started and now it's down here. I think over the next six months, probably, I think, I feel like most people's journeys, it happens more around like month eight or nine when they finally start recognizing actual growth. And that's just because the lock, as it is growing out, it's also um, shrinking because it's having to, to mature and to coil on itself. So because of that, you know, six months goes by and you're not really seeing any growth, any length, uh, I should say, but it is happening. But it's cool to see because my braid, for example, with this one, the braid pattern starts about right here. It's a little fuzzy right there, so it might be covered up, but the actual braid pattern starts right here. And all of this is hair that's been interlocked within the last six months. So that's just cool to see how it's how it's growing and maturing throughout my locks. Uh, still have coily ends on a lot of them. And I'm just letting those do what they do. And they are maturing as they mature. Some of them have turned into um, non-coily ends where they're sealing off at the bottom. Like that. I have a lot of locks like that where the coils end up coiling up a lot. Uh, and then they end up just closing off and becoming the, the bottom of the lock. I've had some where the bottoms eventually come off the little balls. So they're all kind of just in their own spots, doing their own things. And I like it. The shrinkage is still real. Uh, and like I said, I, I imagine that the shrinkage will continue to happen. I have hand and hair syndrome. I always have had it and I probably always will have it. I'm of the type that I you know, is it really hair freedom if you have to put your hair in a style and then not touch it for six weeks or a month or however long, two months until you get it redone? To me, that's not hair freedom. Hair freedom is to be able to enjoy your crown, you know, every single day of the week. So for me, uh, enjoying my crown isn't just being able to display my crown for others, but for me to be able to enjoy the feel of my crown. I like to feel my locks and feel how they're developing and, and things like that. So yes, I have hand and hair syndrome, always will, and I have no problem with that. I know for some people that may, you know, who have thinner, less dense hair that might cause thinning or issues. I don't know. It does not cause any problems for me. And like I said, for me to enjoy my crown and feel true freedom, that means that I have to be able to put my hands through my hair when and how I want to. So that's that. I'll give a little 360 as we wrap this up. Just so you can see the back. And I can't tell if I'm, I know I'm not giving y'all straight lines, but I assume that you can see the parts. So yeah, that is my hair six months in and thank y'all for coming along on this ride with me. I will continue to make videos and content Pretty soon I have a DIY hair oil video that has been requested by multiple people, so I will be making that soon. Just takes a little bit more time because of the amount of setup and figuring out I'm gonna film it all, but I will be sharing that soon, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for what's next. Y'all have a wonderful day, and remember to be kind to others. Bye.